Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at this uh, little component tester right here. And this is really kind of a neat tool and it's we're going to look at the evolution of this thing and uh, how these things work and we're just going to test a whole bunch of components and see if we can uh, trip it up. And we'll compare it to a multimeter over here too. So first things first, this is a kit. This is one of the first iterations of this, this transistor tester on the top and had a, a battery connection or a, a wall work connection over here and this is a kit you build yourself so you solder all the components on and build it up push the button and it would test and you're testing leads were over here um this is like a first version of a two-line lcd it didn't have any graphics it just kind of gave you some numbers it was extremely basic but it, it did work okay the evolution of that product was this and this one um it's quite a bit better so this one you push the button you get test uh, goes through some firmware stuff and then it tells you what your battery voltage is and then goes goes ahead and does the test and, and there's no unknown or damaged component in there so let's go ahead and take a 10k ohm resistor here let's try that out and this should read 10k ohms 10.06 kilo ohms well, that's pretty good let's try this out so we should be able to see this led flash as it goes through its testing process Two flickers. It's a diode with a 1.78 volt forward drop. So that's pretty neat. So this tester was is pretty good. Um, it's not super durable, but you know it does it does work. This one is the newest iteration I found, and it's in a nice package, so you can use it on a bench and not worry about it touching other wires and shorting out and things like that. Uh, it comes with a built-in lithium-ion battery, and it comes with a USB charging lead. Obviously, you can use whatever you want. This is a micro USB end on here, so none of that fancy USB-C, but, you know, it's pretty good. We'll take it. Basically, it's just a, a nice little tester. comes with a user manual. Um, this actually has, like, a calibration process, stuff like that. Um, they give you quite a bit of detailed information about all the different things it can measure. And, uh, yeah, it has a calibration mode. You can do infrared decoding, things like that. So it's got, it's got a huge amount of features. So I have a whole bunch of components. We have some big capacitors, little capacitors, uh, just a bunch of values to test with it. When you actually buy this, it comes with these little set of leads, and it comes with a little shorting bar. So you can do the calibration process with these, and then they give you a little diode led and a little tiny capacitor too you can test out you know basically just junk components but at least they give you something so you can immediately start playing with it and so my component i'm going to try and fool it with uh we have a three volt zener diode so i'm curious if it'll be able to detect the voltage drop of this so first things first let's let's go ahead and turn on a multimeter and see what it does with the diode uh, let's see if we can get that so we'll hook it up one way and we're not on diode. Let's put it on diode. So we got 0.7 volt drop across that diode. So that's the forward bias version. Let's see what it says for reverse bias. Nothing. Can't detect it. So that's a fail on this meter's uh, point. Let's see what it does with a LED. That's the wrong way around. Positives the long lead. All right, so it can measure it can measure the LED. It's just just very little illumination on there, so you can see that. Uh, so it has about a two volt forward voltage on this, which probably makes sense. So this doesn't have enough forward voltage to measure even a three volt zener diode. So that's the limitation of this multimeter. So we'll go ahead and turn this thing on. When I start it up. It's testing already. They have a bunch of different uh, markings in here for different uh, components you can put in. So we'll go ahead and put this 10 mega ohm resistor in. Two, two mega ohm resistor in. Push the button. Should be able to get a reading on that. There it is. 2.025 K ohm. So it's off a little bit, but really not bad. Make sure you can see that. So this is a uh, shock key diode. It's supposed to have a low forward voltage. It says 776 millivolts, which isn't very good. So this actually may be a Zener diode. I should grab the right one. This is this is a 5.6 volt Zener diode, so this detected it as a just a regular diode. Um, so I need to find uh, my low forward voltage diode, but I don't, I don't really need to check that. Let's check this big diode. See what this one gets. 
So let's see if this comes up with the Zener. It does. So this actually did detect two diodes. It, it got a four voltage of 2.77 and a four voltage of 773 millivolts. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. So up to three volts, it's able to detect that. That's great. Try one of our LEDs. See it flicker or flash a couple times as it's doing its test. And there it is, diode. This is a big capacitor. We'll see how this one does. This might confuse it. This is a 1000 microfarad, uh, 10 volt capacitor. Nichigan, of course. And there it is, 1000 farads. Uh, has an ESR 0.21 ohms. Nah, nothing wrong with that at all. That's good. Let's try a low value resistor. So I have a 10 ohm resistor here. Try that out. 10.1 ohms. Can't beat that. Uh, this is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Let's see where it puts this one. And the battery's dead. <laughs> so maybe not the best battery life. So it shows a red LED on the bottom when it's charging. Let's do a test. 10,000 picofarads. 100 or 10 nanofarads, so that's right on. Here's another diode. This is just like a regular rectifier diode. That's a jockey diode. <laughs> 248 millivolts. So you can see the components look like something on the outside, and I'm just guessing what they are. And sometimes they aren't, and this thing susses out what they actually are uh, really fast without having to read the label. So this is a 1N51 uh, something or other. 1N5819. Okay, so yep, just a normal 100-volt uh, uh, shocky diode. And let's try some more difficult components. So this is a JFET. I believe this is an N-channel JFET. Let's see what it comes up. Almost instantaneously came up with an N-channel JFET as the, uh, the gate voltage there. That was almost instant. That's really good. Let's try, I think this might be a P channel FET, but it might also be an N FET. I don't remember. ND MOS. So this one it thinks is a N channel MOSFET. Let's try that again. <laughs> Looks a little buggy, huh? Uh, let's see. It thinks that that's an... So this is a, this is coming up as a MOSFET, but this is a um, MOSFET. So it's, it's thinking that it's, it shuts off at that voltage, not on at that voltage. So it, it is actually correct in what it's saying this, but it's, it's actually a JFET. This isn't a MOSFET. So it's not correct. All right. We got a 2N3904. This should just be a regular transistor. See what I get with this one. Two diodes. Don't like that one. Let's try that again. I just flipped the component around, see if it comes up with something different. Two diodes. So it is failing on a conventional uh, BJT transistor for some reason. Here, let's try a BC337. This is another conventional uh, NPN transistor. All right, that it got. NPN BJT. We already tried our JFET. What's this guy? This is a MOSFET. Yep. So this, uh, so yeah, this one is coming up correctly. Enhancement mode MOSFET. So this is a 2N7000 and it's just a regular uh, N channel MOSFET. N E MOSFET. So let's put that other device back in there. N D MOSFET. Depletion mode was the word I was looking for before. I couldn't come up with that. I kept coming up with an enhancement. It's depletion mode. So this thing's conducting right now, and then when you put apply the voltage, positive voltage to it, it'll shut off. So it, it operates backwards of a normal MOSFET. And um Yeah. That's not what this is. It's a JFET. So this is a Cree 
C2M008020 MOSFET. Uh, so this is a silicon carbide MOSFET and it, it's obviously been hacked apart here. Uh, but this is a high band gap semiconductor and so it uses a lot more voltage to be enabled. But let's see if this device can test it. No problem. So you can see the voltage threshold on this one's 3.52 volts, so it's much higher. Let's push it again. And uh, yeah, it's got a 2.56 volt diode, which is normal because it's a larger band gap semiconductor. Um, yeah, so it's able to test that, no problem. So none of these components stumped it, except for the uh, depletion mode MOSFET or a P-channel JFET. seems to be a little confused on which components which with that test. It, uh, you can see the battery life's maybe not that great. You can see that it keeps shutting off fairly quickly because it's running out of battery while we're trying to do the tests. So it's got positives, it's got negatives, but for you know, 20 or $30, you can come up with one of these things. Um, I think this one was gonna be a little more money because it does have the built-in battery, but you know, that may be room for improvement in the future is to open this thing up and maybe put in a bigger battery because obviously it doesn't last very long, the one that's uh, pre-installed. And uh, yeah, well, that's about it. Thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe.